the national decision-making institutions, presidential government. The legislature and the executive exist and are elected independently. Both are responsible for making and carrying out law. Unlike parliamentary system, they are forced into the kind of cooperation where the two depend closely on one another. In a presidential system, the political party may operate to soften natural competition between executives and legislatures. In the U.S., for example, the president as head in one of the two great parties, and that guarantees large number of allies in the Congress, to which the system does not force the sort of unity on the president, his party's members of the Congress, that we would see in a parliamentary system. However, in a presidential legislative cooperation, we must note two things. Number one, the presidential system has little control over the career and advancement of members of the legislature and cannot force unity. The president will not be able to control what happens in the legislature even if when the president's party has a majority of the seats in the legislature. Two, throughout 1980s, the Republican Party in the U.S., that held the presidency at times controlled the Senate, while a Democratic Party who controls the House of Representatives. Meaning, when there is divided control, such as this cooperation between two branches of government is even more fragile, and there is no guarantee that the party holds the presidency the two parts of the government apparatus are elected independently. Presidential and parliamentary systems compared. What difference does it make whether a state is a parliamentary or a presidential system? Some differences include the following. Policy leadership is often more clearly lodged with the president than with the parliamentary cabinet. Responsibility for policy is more difficult to identify in a presidential system. Comprehensive policy is more difficult to accomplish in a presidential system than in a parliamentary system. Recruitment of executive leaders differ in the two systems. There are special problems for review and control of the executive in a presidential system. Political process is less flexible in presidential systems than in parliamentary systems because of president's fixed terms. Constitutional review of some sort seems to be more necessary in a presidential system as is true in general of divided systems of power. For the responsibility for policy, no part of the governmental apparatus can be held responsible for any particular policy or any particular lack of policy. Presidential systems do not present a clear picture of the responsibilities for policy and this leads to weaknesses. Like voters cannot pin the responsibility for policies on any particular official, their electoral choices become less significant. Also, in a presidential government caused by its unclear responsibility of public officials and may behave irresponsibly, and they may vote simultaneously to such decisions like to cut taxes. Next, presidential systems and a comprehensive policy. In this, it's difficult to make comprehensive policy in the presidential because policies of varied compromises are not put together. So, it is not enough that a merely majority of the people want something done. Next, recruitment of executive leaders. In the presidential system, the recruitment into executive is fairly independent of legislative parts of government. However, in a parliamentary system, we know much more what we are getting than in presidential. Next, in the review and control of the executive, the difference between the function and connection of the executives and their other bodies are mainly tackled about, whereas in parliamentary system, the prime minister and cabinet members has its regular session of parliament procedure where they interact with each other and raise their concerns and ideas in which the main purpose of it. While in presidential, the media usually looks into their shoulder and grab that opportunity to get some information since the executives and legislatives rarely report. whereas. There is that idea that the executive has this isolated atmosphere between other bodies that creates a facade towards them. While in flexibility of political process, this part states about how flexible a political process can be in any situations. Whereas in presidential form, if a president got sick, no one has the capability to oust the president. Unless if the president dies, commonly the vice president will take over. While in parliamentary system, 
if ever one member withdraw their support or have some controversial issue, it's not complicated for the system to adjust, whereas the existing members may just oust any of those person. Therefore, political process is flexible since it can just accommodate and meet any circumstances right away. In the split executive or parliamentary systems, basically what this topic is trying to portray is how different form of government system has different function of representatives as well as the impact of their influence to the public masses. Where in parliamentary system, the executives consist of the prime minister and cabinet members who are responsible for administrative leadership and the head of state as the symbolic leader of the state. While in a presidential form, the president himself has the function of these two. Monarchy form of government, setting Britain as an example where the prime minister and cabinets are responsible for the political and administrative leadership, but is the queen who carries out the ceremonies and personifies the state. In short, in presidential form, strengthening the authority and structure of this president is the main concern. We might be left with an idea that parliamentary system is better among the presidential ones, then why aren't all democracies parliamentary system? It is because parliamentary relies on faithfulness whereas it transforms political division into the policy-making machinery. Since parliamentary system is run by a party or cooperative coalition of parties which controls majority of votes of, in the parliament. However, having the idea of dividing the country into numerous parties which are hostile to each other is still impossible because it is hard for us to find a large or enough number of people who is available and will serve together the country cooperatively as a governing coalition. The point here is that there are actually some country who prefers the idea of dividing power but has better and stable system than what parliamentary could provide. Setting Nigeria as an example who abandoned parliamentary system where the democratic government was established way back 1975 and set up a system with an independent presidency rather like that of the United States. Democracy and the question of accountability. In a democracy, representative institutions such as the parliament or congress and the president are elected by the citizens of the state in order to represent them in setting the policies of the state. Basically, citizens give authority to the so-called government to enact laws and in democratic systems, presidentialism means that the executive and legislature are both responsible for making laws but they are independent to each other. Unlike in parliamentary, these two are dependent. Next is the accountability of a democratic government. Is the extent to which citizens can hold members of the government responsible by rewarding them when they do what the citizens want and punishing them when they do not. So, another important concept in democracy is accountability. It is when a government makes choices on behalf of the people and the people have the ability to reward or sanction the government. Another thing is accountability is about the relationship between state and its citizens thus making it an important concept of a good government. How do we achieve democratic accountability? First is through transparency and active reporting. Reporters, unlike citizens, can work full-time at trying to understand what is going on in the government. On one hand, transparency is the obligation of the government to share information with its citizens. On the other hand, reporters or people working in the media provide most of the information that we get as citizens about a government official's actions. Thus, one way to know if the government is accountable to such action is through the words of the media who does a lot of research than ordinary citizens. Well-researched reports that distill information for the public can be very helpful. In fact, it provides most of the information. However, it is being said that citizens cannot cope up with the media's information and sometimes the information that they produce is manipulated, thus making them ineffective. Secondly, focusing on parties as teams. The press and the public easily track what a few political parties are doing, rather than what hundreds of officials are doing. 
The idea here is that citizens must focus on the party as one rather than taking a closer look to individuals in a party to ease their task to examine if government is politically accountable. Under a system of responsible party government, a party publishes regularly a program of what it will enact if it achieved power. Responsible system of government is when parties should become more tightly disciplined. One purpose of a political party is to know the party's political identity and this way we would be able to know about their goals and objectives, their programs if they get elected, and their purpose why they run. Lastly, the retrospective voting. When voting respectively, voting retrospectively is when citizens do not need to know specifically what officials have been doing but need only to know whether their lives are going well. In retrospective voting, it is being said that voters look back at the years an official has been in office and vote to re-elect the official of their lives and the lives of those around them have gone well over those years. Furthermore, it refers to voting made after taking into consideration factors like the performance of a political party. Instead of asking, what are officials doing, we should be asking to ourselves, how is my life going? With that, we can hold government accountable for their programs and laws and we can reward or punish them as citizens, whether or not the government could have done anything about them. Voters often punish incumbents if bad things happen. One current example I can think of is the spread of the COVID-19. Lately, I have been seeing people blaming the administration due to lack of actions or whatever. COVID-19 is not a political event. It is a biological event in which the government has no total control over it. However, this kind of issue is not new. Even in past administrations, as citizens, government is to be blamed if something bad happens because they are the ones in leadership.